The Lavalois technique IPA, L. Va. Lava is a name given by archaeologists to a distinctive type of stone napping developed by precursors to modern humans during the Paleolithic period. It is named after 19th century finds of flint tools in the Lavalois Perret suburb of Paris, France. The technique was more sophisticated than earlier methods of lithic reduction, involving the striking of lithic flakes from a prepared lithic core. A striking platform is formed at one end and then the core's edges are trimmed by flaking off pieces around the outline of the intended lithic flake. This creates a domed shape on the side of the core, known as a tortoise core, as the various scars and rounded form are reminiscent of a tortoise's shell. When the striking platform is finally hit, a lithic flake separates from the lithic core with a distinctive plano convex profile and with all of its edges sharpened by the earlier trimming work. This method provides much greater control over the size and shape of the final flake which would then be employed as a scraper or knife although the technique could also be adapted to produce projectile points known as Lavalois points. Scientists consider the Lavalois complex to be a Mode 3 technology, as a result of its diachronic variability. This is one level superior to the Acheulean complex of the Lower Paleolithic. Origins The technique is first found in the Lower Paleolithic but is most commonly associated with the Neanderthal Mousterian industries of the Middle Paleolithic. In the Levant, the Lavalois technique was also in used by anatomically modern humans during the Middle Stone Age. In North Africa, the Lavalois technique was used in the Middle Stone Age, most notably in the Aterian industry to produce very small projectile points. While Lavalois cores do display some variability in their platforms, their flake production surfaces show remarkable uniformity. As the Lavalois technique is counterintuitive, teaching the process is necessary and thus language is a prerequisite for such technology. Evolution The distinctive forms of the flakes were originally thought to indicate a wide-ranging Lavalois culture resulting from the expansion of archaic Homo sapiens out of Africa. However, the wide geographical and temporal spread of the technique has rendered this interpretation obsolete. Adler et al. further argues that Lavalois technology evolved independently in different populations and thus cannot be used as a reliable indicator of Paleolithic human population change and expansion. Aside from technique, the overarching commonality in Lavalois complexes is the attention given to maximizing core efficiency. Lysette and von kramen taubadel measured variability in shape and geometrics relationships between cores over multiple regions, with an outcome that suggests a tendency for nappers to choose planforms with a specific surface morphology. In other words, they conclude that Lavalois nappers cared less about the overall outline or shape of their core and more about the striking surface, evidence of complex pre-planning and recognition of an ideal form of Lavalois core. A recent article by Lysette and Aren statistically shows the efficiency of the Lavalois technique which at times has been called into question. Lysette and Aren created 75 Lavalois flakes from 25 Texas chert nodules. They counted the 3,957 flakes and separated them into four stages in order to show efficiency, which grew subsequently in each stage. Based on the comparative study of 567 debitage flakes and 75 preferential Lavalois flakes, Lysette and Aren found out the thickness is more evenly distributed and less variable across preferential Lavalois flakes, which indicates the thickness as an important factor for efficiency and retouch potential. The experiment also shows that the Lavalois core is an economic optimal strategy of raw material lithic usage, which means it can generate longest cutting edge per weight unit of raw material. This result also implies that the mobility of prehistoric people was higher when applying Lavalois technology. Prehistoric people may explore more area with Lavalois cores, which can make longer cutting edge than the other flake making technique under same amount of cores, and no need to worry about the lack of raw material to make tools. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Defining Lavalois. There is disagreement when it comes to defining Lavalois technology. Archaeologists question which attributes and dimensions are specifically associated with Lavalois, and argue that there are other techniques with similar cosmetic and functional aspects. Due to these disagreements, there is now a more precise set of criteria that outlines Lavalois technology from a geometric standpoint. These criteria are Exploitation of the volume of raw material is organized in terms of two intersecting planes, or flaking surfaces. The two surfaces are hierarchically related, one constituting the striking platform and the other the primary reduction surface. The primary reduction surface is shaped such that the morphology of the product is predetermined, which is fundamentally a function of the lateral and distal convexities of the surface. The fracture plane for removing primary products is sub-parallel to the plane of intersection of the two surfaces, and the striking platform size and shape is adjusted to allow removal of flakes parallel to this plane, usually through retouch or faceting. Topic. Locations Topic. Africa Morocco, at Jebel er Houd, a former barite mine located 100 km west of Marrakesh, Lavalois tools have been found. Dated as approximately 315,000 years old in 2017, the finds were highly significant to the understanding of both the development of this technique and early humans. John McNabb, archaeologist at the University of Southampton said of this, The tools the people at Jebel er Houd were making were based on a napping technique called Lavalois, a sophisticated way of shaping stone tools. The date of 315,000 years ago adds to a growing realization that Lavalois originates a lot earlier than we thought. Is Jebel or Houd telling us that this new technology is linked to the emergence of the hominin line that will lead to modern humans? Does the new find imply there was more than one hominin lineage in Africa at this time? It really stirs the pot. Egypt, within the banks of the Nile River, excavations have located within the 30, 15, and 10-foot terraces, Lavalshan implements. Within the 30-foot terrace, the implements were originally thought to be early Mousterian, but were later reclassified. The 15- and 10-foot terraces again were classified first as Egyptian Mousterian, but later as developed Lavalshan. Kenya, large Lavalwa flakes struck from boulder cores have been found at the Capthrin Formation site in western Kenya, near Lake Bigoria and Lake Baringo. The earliest examples come from the leaky Handax area and the factory site. Both examples feature large flakes, approximately 10 to 20 centimeters in diameter, and have been dated between 284 and 509,000 years ago. Topic. Asia Syria, Israel, excavated within a stratigraphic column containing tools from this culture. Afghanistan, implements located in the Habak Valley. Northeast Asia, the extension of the Lavalwa method to this part of the world now seems undoubtable with recent evidence at Shudangu northern China in Mongolia and Altai Siberia, dating from the late Pleistocene. Hong Kong, Wang Te Tung in Sai Kung located in the East New Territories. Pakistan, the Soanian Techno Complex from the Son Valley located in northern Pakistan, has been identified as a Mode 3 Lavalwa complex. China, evidence of Lavalwa technology from the lithic assemblage of the Guanindong Cave site in southwest China, dated to approximately 170,000 to 80,000 years ago, is presented by Hu et al., 2018. The first discovered blade site in China was in Shudangu in 1923 by Lincent and Teilhard de Chardin. When they excavated the location, 12 localities were founded and had an age range of roughly 40,000 to 10,000 BP. 
Out of the 12 localities, one Sudanese pound proved to be most important with the discovery of numerous unique, elongated blanks and Lavalois-like cores found. India, the stratified prehistoric site of Atyarampakam, India, has shown that processes signifying the end of the Acheulean culture and the emergence of a Middle Paleolithic culture occurred at 385 plus or minus 64,000 years ago. Ka. Topic. Southern Caucasus Armenia, Norgeji 1 archaeological site. The artifacts, found preserved in soil under a later lava flow and dated at 325,000 to 335,000 years old, were a mix of two distinct stone tool technology traditions, bifacial tools and Lavalois tools. Daniel Adler suggests that the coexistence of bifacial and Lavalois tools at the site provides the first clear evidence that local populations developed Lavalois technology out of existing bifacial technology, and that the artifacts found at Norgeji reflect the technological flexibility and variability of a single population. He further concludes that this challenges the view that technological change resulted from population change, and suggests instead that Lavalois technology developed independently from existing technology within different human populations who shared a common technological ancestry. Topic. See also Ubetsu technique